Arts. Welcome everyone. Thank you so much for coming today to hear about Oasis and our wellbeing services. So I, my name is Chris. I'm a counsellor here at Flinders University. I uh, also work here at Oasis and this is Gareth Sperber, Dr. Gareth Sperber, psychologist and e-mental health project officer. Correct. Before we begin, I'd just like to acknowledge on this that we meet on this beautiful land of the Ghana people and pay respects to Elders past, present and emerging, and what a beautiful land we have here. We're so blessed to be studying and working here at Flinders Uni. I think you definitely chose the best uni uh, because of this beautiful environment. But also, Flinders is the only uni in Australia that has a wellbeing centre like this. So please do make the most of it. I'm going to spend the next 15 minutes talking about what we do here, and then Gareth's going to talk a bit about some of the programs he runs and also uh, health counselling and disability. If you have any questions over the next 15 minutes to half an hour, just raise your hand or just, just jump in. Uh, I'm also, I've got this microphone, we're using microphones because this is being live streamed as well, so just to keep that in mind. So welcome to Oasis. Has anyone been here before? Yeah, okay. Have you enjoyed your visit here? Have you been? <laughs> You'd recommend? Cool. Yeah, okay. Well, welcome back. This is essentially a drop in place, a drop in centre, if you like, uh, where students can just come and relax and chill. We call it an oasis because it's a bit of an oasis away from the hustle and bustle of study. We've got this room here that you can come and use anytime, pull up a bean bag or a, a set up a table and chair and, and study here. We've got the space through here as well, the lounge area. We've got um, the courtyard around the corner, which is beautiful as well. And we've got the kitchen where you can make your own food. We've got the only stove and oven here. So if you really want to bake some cookies, then we would love that. Come and do that, please. Uh, but if you want to just make your own food, that's totally fine. And we've got free tea and coffee as well. I think it's Makona, so it's not the best, but it's better than paying five dollars for whatever it is down there. So we've got a whole bunch of wellbeing programs that I'll tell you about and our aim is it's all about uh, creating wellbeing for academic success. So we have three pillars essentially that uh, Oasis sits under. We are all about building community and embracing diversity. We have a faith and spirituality component as well. So we have uh, two chaplains who work here at Oasis. So if you'd like to have a discussion with a the chaplain, then you're most welcome to do that. We have Dave and Tosun, who are very approachable people. Of course, we have our counselling service, but if you're after something a bit more informal, then they're always there to, to have a chat with you as well. You don't have to be religious or have a faith. Um, they're there to talk about anything at all that you'd like to, to chat about. For the more serious sort of things, then we definitely recommend the counsellors. And of course, men, uh, mental and physical well-being is also our focus, and we're going to yeah, go through some of the programs that focus on these three areas. Our most popular program that gets the most people through our door is the Community Marker. That's happening this Thursday, and it's every Thursday during semester time, 11am to 1pm. I think in during the mid-semester break we do keep it running. The mid-year break we, we don't. This is where you can pick up free fruit and vegetables and free bread. And we also have really low-cost pantry items as well. So, for example, you might be able to pick up a, a quite a big bag of rice for a couple of dollars. Or, you know, lots of canned stuff and lots of chocolate as well, so that's always good. We don't have just healthy things. Uh, but it's, 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 it's a much lower price. So we know that cost of living is hurting everyone at the moment, and especially students. So that's just our way of, of helping you out and giving something back to students. Every Friday we have, uh, we have meditation in this room. So Dave, our chaplain, runs... It goes for about 15 to 20 minutes. It's a mindful, mindful meditation, so it's based on the principles of mindfulness. Uh, so that's 12 o'clock here, Wednesday and Friday. And so if you can make that, it's a wonderful way to take some time out from your schedule and, and re-centre yourself. No experience is needed. If you're a beginner to meditation, that's totally fine. 
Dave, our chaplain, he's a busy man. He also runs forest walks occasionally. And this week he's running two of them uh, on, that's tomorrow. And looks like the weather, I don't know, it's meant to be really hot today, but it's cool. It's quite strange, but hopefully tomorrow the weather will be okay for a, a walk. So he takes people all the way through the forest and the idea there is just to, again, have a break from study and the demands of life and do some forest bathing and reconnect with nature because a lot of the evidence and research shows that that's really helpful for our well-being. So please come along tomorrow and... Oh, there's also one on the 28th as well, next week. And they'll be held um, sporadically over the semester as well. We have these conversation groups, and we also have Flinders Mates. They're both very similar. This one is run by the chaplains. This one is run by students, your fellow students, student volunteers. They happen pretty much every day of the week except Monday. Uh, in this lounge area in the corner. So you just come along, you don't need to register, just if you feel like having a chat uh, and meeting some new people. Come on through. Come on through, it's all good. We have yeah, a lot of the evidence and research around success at university shows that if you, have, if you have friends, if you have people you know in your college that you're studying with, but just generally if you have connections, then you're, you've got a better chance of succeeding. What I love about working here is that there's people from all over the world that call this place their home, their home away from home. So if you like meeting people from all over the world, then this is a great place to do it. So I'd highly recommend that you, you get involved and um, yeah, come and have a, a tea and a coffee and a chat. Uh, and if you'd like to volunteer for things like this, we have take volunteers for the community market if you'd like to get involved in our little community here or Flinders Mates. Uh, if you'd like to, to run a group, then just have a chat with us as well. Later in March, April, we'll be opening up our uh, application process for wellbeing ambassadors. So with the ambassador program, we, uh, we take on about 20 students who become our wellbeing ambassadors. And their role is to give us advice about how we can improve our services, our, not only Oasis, but also the counselling disability service as well. And the wellbeing ambassadors will also go on some of our stalls. We have Wellbeing Week is a big event and festival in week nine. We've got Are You OK Day later in the year. We've got Mental Health Week. So it's a great, if you, great chance if you're wanting to get some experience um, in the wellbeing area. It's a passion of yours, then keep that in mind. Keep a lookout. A lot of people love this one. So during winter, we have uh, winter warmers that will be from May till September, or maybe April till September. And we make some very, very delicious vegan soup from scratch in the kitchen here. So you can just come along and grab a bowl of soup and warm your tummy, warm your soul, have a chat with some people. Or not, if you just want to have a bowl of soup by yourself, that's totally fine too. So we are this year running a few new programs for, for you all. The first one being Life Hacks drop-in sessions. We thought we would run something that people can just come and drop into once a week. So this will be every Wednesday at 2.10 during semester time in this room. And it starts at 2.10 just to give people a chance to come from their lectures or tutorials. And this is our schedule. There's flyers on the, the table over there, so please feel free to grab one. But we'll be covering all kinds of topics. We'll be repeating some of them during the year if you miss out. Next week, we'll be talking about uh, setting some goals for the year, some values-based goals to help you get started. We'll be talking about building better habits, and then some of the usual things that we all struggle with, like procrastination and stress, anxiety, sleep, mobile phone, addictions, all those wonderful things. Um, and we'll also have 20 minutes, a 20 minute component of that session where you can ask anything about anything. Gareth will be joining me and you can ask us about any wellbeing topic at all, even if it's not related to one of these. Myself and Christine from the disability team are running this ADHD support group. 
that begins in week four. It's a 10 week program and it, demand is increasing for that, which is great. So if you think that might be something for you or you know someone who has a diagnosis or is likely to, be, to have this diagnosis, then um, go to the page. There's some information about how you can register for that. Myself and a colleague, we run mental health first aid courses throughout the year. There will be about uh, 12 run throughout the year. Does anyone know about mental health first aid? Or done a mental health first aid course? Yeah, you've done the course? I've just not. Yeah. Oh. When I registered, it would be a full course. Yeah, it's very, very popular amongst students because it's, it's two full days of training where you learn to identify now, firstly, you learn about the various mental illnesses and then you, we also take you through how to approach someone if you think someone's struggling or if someone comes to you and also how to identify that potentially they might be at risk and then what to do. So it's all about, just like physical first aid, it's all about saving lives. So that's totally free, which is pretty amazing. So two full days of training, you get an accreditation for that as well. So, yeah, I'm sorry you, have, you, you haven't been able to get access, but we have 12 running this year. So that's the most I think we've ever run. So that'll be during semester and also um, outside of semester times as well. Um, I'd recommend just, just Googling that one, Mental Health First Aid, Flinders Uni, and you'll find the information you need. We'll come back to that one. This is a course that I'm running with two other counsellors, both here and at Sturt. Called Mindfulness for Academic Success. Uh, I ran this personally. We've been running it for probably four or five years. Uh, it's a program that's come from Monash, Monash University. They have a, a centre for mindfulness over there. And last semester I ran it for the first time with, with 15 students. 13 came to all five weeks and they really, really enjoyed the, the program and got a lot out of it in terms of how they uh, focus, especially how they deal with obtrusive thoughts and feelings and, and, and get through their, their day with a bit, more, um, a bit more joy and a bit more, um, uh, I would say, focus. And we talk about dealing with things like procrastination um, and dealing with some of those really strong feelings that get in the way of us doing what we need. So at this stage, we're looking at starting in week two, in two weeks' time, down at Sturt and here. Um, it, we may delay that by a few weeks, depending on, on numbers. But if you're interested, we have flyers over there uh, that you can scan and you can apply. And if you apply, we'll give you a quick five-minute call, check in, and make sure you're, you know what the deal is with the program. There's, uh, there's daily homework. Uh, so it's... Um, not too much homework, it's only like five minute mindfulness exercise. But the idea being that the more you do it, then the more it's going to help you and build those neural pathways in your brain. And if you want to know more about that, I'm running a session uh, about this at 1.45 today. So hang around if you'd like some more information about that. If you decide you'd like to apply to be a wellbeing ambassador, this is an example of what you could be doing. These are wellbeing ambassadors here. This is wellbeing week, which will be happening in week nine. A great chance to talk to students about wellbeing and, uh, and, and meet new people. This is Are You OK Day. Uh, we are looking for, for volunteers across the board as well for, <coughs> for various things, Flinders Mates, Community Market, even being on our front desk as well, if that's something you'd like to do. Every year we do a survey about what people think, what students think of Oasis, and this is what people are saying. It's a little word cloud here. Someone pointed out yesterday there's awkward up there. I hadn't seen that before, so that just proves that this is, this is real. I'm not sure why, why, why it, that, what, what's behind that, but... Um, we hope that it's both tranquil, safe, welcoming, and a bit awkward, maybe that's okay. We can work with that. One of the best ways to stay in touch with what we're doing is through social media, so we're on the usual platforms. Feel free to email us if you have any questions. Do you have any questions now about Oasis at all? I think we'll skip the video, because we're running out of time here. 
But I will now pass on to Gareth to talk a bit about his programs and health counselling disability. Easy, thank you very much. Um, so welcome everyone if you're coming back to Flinders, uh, welcome back. Um, if you're new to Flinders, welcome to the Flinders community. Um, so Chris has given a really good overview of what Oasis and the kind of centre offers. Um, what I want to do is talk about just a couple of programs that um, I have responsibility for and then talk a little bit about health counselling and disability services which are attached, I guess, to Oasis or part of that broader wellbeing group um, and what they offer and, and how you might access them. Uh, just a heads up, you know, there's been a lot of QR codes um, in the slides. If you haven't captured them, that's okay. There's a final QR code at the end of the presentation that gets you the slides from the presentation itself. Um, so if you feel as though you've missed one that you're interested in, don't worry, at the end there'll be the chance to, to get all of it. Uh, who here procrastinates? Just a show of hand. Yeah, cool, so everyone. Um, so look, it's 80% uh, um, of students generally report in surveys that they procrastinate to some extent, around 40% say it's problematic. Uh, so one of the programs that I run, which we'll probably launch later this year, um, is Studyology, which is on the, the right-hand side there. Uh, that's a program specifically about understanding the psychology of procrastination. Uh, if you do the life hack sessions and things like that, we will teach you some of the elements from that program. Then if you want to do the full program, a five week, uh, please join me later in the year for studyology. The Be Well plan um, is more about positive psychology. So teaching people, uh, you know, we learn a lot of skills about how we manage negative emotions. So how to manage stress, how to manage anxiety. Uh, but there's a whole other literature based on how you bring into your life the things that you want. How do you bring happiness into your life? How do you bring gratitude into your life? How do you bring compassion or empathy? The Be Well Plan is a program that comes out of Samory um, in the city and it teaches you those skills. Uh, we'll be launching that program uh, later this year. That'll be an online version, so regardless of where you are, you'll be able to uh, tune into that program uh, online. So I'll skip forward. Those are the two programs uh, that I have responsibility for, but you'll probably see me pop up, uh, you'll certainly see me pop up at life hacks sessions. Uh, so please feel free to ask me a question as we go. I'll just move through these to make my way to the slides I want. It'll probably try and play a video. And all right. So you've got Oasis, you've got this centre here. This is very much about, I guess, enhancing your university experience. Can you add things to it that make your time here at university more enjoyable, more social, more connected? There is also health counselling and disability services. This is where you go to if something about your university experience isn't quite going to plan um, and you need to speak to someone about that. We have a GP practice on campus here at Bedford Park. Fully equipped GP practice, the same as you would find in the community. The benefit of accessing it as a student is it's completely bulk billed. Uh, all you need to do is bring your Medicare card or overseas healthcare card. Uh, it runs during Monday to Friday. Um, telehealth options are available once you've had a first appointment um, with the doctor. The records for any of this stuff are stored separately from your university record. So if you're worried about, I go and see a GP or I go and see a counsellor and that becomes available to people in the university, it does not. It's a completely separate system that does not stored on your university record. We have an SA pathology on site. So if your doctor asks for a blood test um, and you're uh, on these particular days and particular times, um, if you've ever been to pathology, you know the deal. You sit there awkwardly with a bunch of other people clutching your number, um, hoping uh, desperately it's the next one to come up. Um, we have some specialist people that you can talk to depending on the nature of the issue that you're struggling with. So we have a counselling team. If you're experiencing anything, any personal issues or academic issues that are getting in the way of you having the best university experience possible, uh, you can initiate a, a counselling appointment and have a chat with someone, start to explore that process, do some problem solving. Um, Counsellors not only um, are, are great in terms of solving the particular issue that you might be struggling with. They're also very knowledgeable about the university system because they sit within the um, university. They know who you might need to see um, to solve a particular problem around the university. 
Our intake duty team are the people who you would see if you dropped in um, uh, at the centre um, and you were struggling and you asked to speak to someone. Or you rang in via the number and said, I'm having a tough day, can I have a chat to someone? Someone in the duty team or the intake team is the one that handles that first contact. Um, it's also the people that will contact you if you come through either of these um, mechanisms, through either the online forms or via one of the emails. So they're the people who are sort of monitoring who's coming in on a day-to-day -day basis and doing that kind of quick, immediate sort of problem solving with you. They might then refer you to the counsellor or refer you to someone else in the university, but they're that sort of first point of contact. We do have an after hours crisis support line. Uh, if you're anything like me, I save all of my existential crises for about three o'clock in the morning. Of course, that's not when your average health professional is available to chat. Um, so through um, a kind of a, a, a component of Lifeline. Lifeline has a specific group that are attached to the university system. There's someone to speak to out of hours. So this is after 5 p.m. and before 9 a.m. This is on weekends, this is on public holidays. Um, if you're having a tough time, you want someone to speak to who understands the sort of experience of university students more broadly. Uh, they won't be able to tell you specific Flinders information, so if you ring up and you ask, where's my lecture tomorrow or when's my next assignment due, they're not going to know that information, but they will have an understanding of Flinders more broadly. If you come to the university experience with an existing health condition and you think that health condition is going to have some impact on your ability to engage with study, uh, then we recommend you make an appointment with one of the disability advisors. Disability is a kind of an, an older term now, um, but it encompasses really anyone who brings one of many multiple physical or mental health needs to a university. And the idea of a disability advisor team is to negotiate adjustments to your study so you can engage with your study better. It might be as simple as giving you some access to software that assists um, with writing or hearing or vision. It might be in relation to getting, uh, I won't say no questions asked, but getting um, extensions to assignments more easily, uh, changes to exam conditions, um, access to parking permits, a range of various things that are available. Uh, now, the reason that you would speak to a disability advisor is that they form with you an action, uh, sorry, not an action plan, an access plan. That access plan lists the adjustments that are made for you on the basis of, of your condition and on the basis of what is um, allowable or able within the degree. And then once you have that access plan, it outlines those conditions but keeps the rest of your information confidential. So if you're speaking to a lecturer, rather than having to go and talk to each course coordinator or each lecturer, explain your condition and why you need that particular adjustment, it's, uh, it's covered in the access plan. So you disclose to one person and then that facilitates a much easier conversation around the university. I hope this never happens to you. I hope that your university experience doesn't include one of the following. Um, but if you do experience harassment or discrimination or bullying of any sort, there's a particular counselling stream through which you can go through. Um, the, the, this option gives you not only the counselling process itself, but then the person is knowledgeable about what options are available, what action you could take on the basis of what it is you've experienced. This is my neck of the woods and Chris's neck of the woods. Um, so whether you, now whether you choose to use your time at university to do some of the self-development or self-improvement, that's totally up to you. I don't have a, um, I'd love to see you at one of the sessions, but I'd also love to not see you at one of the sessions. If you don't show up to the procrastination session, it might be because you're not procrastinating, in which case I'll be very happy. But if you want to use your university time to build some of these additional skill sets, um, then we have a few resources, the programs that Chris and I have already talked about, we have a self-help library. Um, I don't hang out with people a lot, so I spend time in front of a computer writing. All of that writing goes into these various different guides. There's a few different ones, uh, getting off to a good start. Uh, there's a self-care mega guide. Quite an ugly looking document, but it's really a brain dump of everything I've ever thought about in relation to self-care. I'd be surprised if the average person can't find a decent or interesting suggestion in there. If you can't, let me know, because it'll send me off on a journey to find something for you that's relevant. Um, and we also have an evidence-based study and exam preparation tips. So I have a sort of a side interest, I guess, in how people learn. 
um, and what are the mechanisms by which people can learn more efficiently, I guess, can kind of shortcut uh, the learning process. I write a blog. Um, uh, you can subscribe to it. It's pretty old school. I realise that uh, you know, my generation is showing when I say I have a blog um, as opposed to a social media channel. I'm not changing it anytime soon because uh, I'm digging my heels in and doing what old men do when they reach a certain age, which is refuse to um, update uh, any of what they do to kind of current practices. Um, but that blog has been running for many years now. It's been running, Chris and I were actually looking at it before because Chris is becoming an author. It's been running since 2017. There's over 1,300 posts on there. Um, within the first couple of weeks, I'd like you to read all of them, um, and then you'll be ready for your university experience. But no, you can subscribe to that blog. Each week, I'll just send a quick summary of what's been added that's new or that's been updated. If there's something of value to you there, um, please feel free to utilise it. A lot of information about when programs are running. So Chris talked about how say uh, a different program might change its dates. So instead of running in week two, it, starts, it runs in week three. This is a news site as well as, as kind of a uh, repository of information. And so if you're subscribed to that, you'll usually hear first about when programs are running, if dates have changed, if we've added new programs. This is how you subscribe. You, know, you can access uh, this either now or just ask for some very simple information. Um, like with any newsletters, there's an easy unsubscribe. So if you de decide that my unique tone of writing is not to your liking, um, then you can always um, do the cruelest thing for a newsletter uh, runner, which is to hit that unsubscribe. A small part of me dies, but your life gets better. Um, uh, I should be clear that I unsubscribe probably to about 20 or 30 newsletters every six months. So, uh, but the option is there. We don't um, bomb you with content. It comes out once a week. You can scan what it is that's, that's there if it's really relevant to you. If it is, uh, it might improve your experience. And the final slide's not showing because Chris didn't update it and everything's been ruined and I'm never going to recover from this. But no, so I'm happy to leave on this. Um, it, as uh, Chris noted, um, pamphlets for the programs uh, are sitting on the desk. Um, everyone has access to a bottle, is yes, that correct? Yes, yes. We want, to, we want to thank you all so much for coming today. Really appreciate you making the effort. I know it's a busy week. So our appreciation to you is an Oasis drink bottle. So please help yourself to one of those. And a pamphlet uh, of yeah, whichever programs tickle your fancy. And a reminder that Chris is doing a taster for Mindfulness for Academic Success in... 15 minutes? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Um, and I'm running a writing for wellbeing workshop um, at 2.30. It is currently full, but I underdid the numbers, which means there's the possibility that if you show up, um, that there'll be spaces there. Uh, you'll catch me and Grace from Student Learning Support Services uh, talking about writing and wellbeing. And there was one other thing that I oh, felt... If I'd... you want a PDF of this, you can... Oh, that's the, the final slide was meant to be a QR code to the PDF. But there, if you go to the blog, Correct. you'll find it there. And the blog is great, by the way. Gareth, I don't want to give him too much of a big head, but he's got a great eye for detail, a very entertaining blog. It's, it's funny and it's informative. So, yes, jump on that one. And lovely to meet all of you. If you have questions, please feel free to come up and ask either Chris or I after the session. Um, otherwise, uh, welcome to uni. And I uh, hope you have a great time. And if you see me walking around and I'm looking grumpy, you, you can still approach me. Um, it's just that's my, that's my natural resting face. Um, and I, I can't at the moment do anything about it. So thank you. All right. Thanks, everyone. Good luck. <laughs>